My guest now is Dr. Aaron Elliott, who specializes in dentistry and a special device for sleep apnea. And you're with the Post Falls Family Dental. That's right. And what does that mean? What when you say family, at what age to what age? We see anywhere from 3 to 103. All right. We see them all. There's been a lot of talk recently about young kids in terms of uh, dr drinking uh, uh, items that have sugar in them. Yeah, we see a lot of what we call baby bottle tooth decay. Okay. And it can be from too much use of you know, milk in the bottle past a year old. Okay. But most of the destruction we see is actually from sippy cups. Okay, and interesting. even watered down juice can still has sugar. Sure. And so what can parents with young kids today do to prevent that? Um, really, it's educating, making sure that their sugar intake is low. Okay. And if they do juice just with meals, it's really important to look at what they're snacking on. So what we do throughout the day that's going to cause the most damage. And as young kids move to be a little older, I'm thinking in grade school and then junior high, there are the candy bars and the, all the other yeah. things that go. How do we help that age group? Um, really, they're going to start making their own decisions. So I actually go to all the sixth graders in Post Falls and teach them about this good decision making, the healthy snacks versus the unhealthy snacks. And most kids don't know that even like fruit snacks and fruit roll-ups really? all are just filled with sugar and they stick to the teeth and can cause a lot of destruction. We see a lot of decay in teenagers yes. when mom and dad aren't around. Because it isn't going to happen to me as yes. a teenager, and right? Yes, there's so much soda and uh, the energy drinks that yes. they drink is really, I, I tell them, you don't need more energy, you need more sleep. Yes. Well, I think back to when I was a child growing up and it was one Coke a week. Mm -hmm. Now it's maybe several during the day several, for an yeah. average teenager. Yeah. At least they don't have it in the schools anymore, yes. but they still can get their hands on it. Right, right. What about prevention for older adults now? What, what are you looking at? What, what happens there? What should they do? Um, well, as we get older, we yes. usually um, get on more medications for... Okay you know, high blood pressure or whatever it may be, right. and our saliva slows down. Okay. And saliva is really the best mouth rinse we have out there. Is it really? And so throughout the day, our saliva is supposed to cleanse the plaque and neutralize our acids mm -hmm. and remineralize the teeth, but when that slows down, we don't have that. So we really work on oral hygiene, okay. even throughout the day, not just morning and night. And also remineralizing the teeth with um, things as fluoride or okay. MI paste and different um, medications we have. Because oftentimes you don't really know the consequence of these youth and middle age mm -hmm. activities until you reach my age when then the Catches cavities and the, yeah. and the crowns mm -hmm. and everything else yep. become a quarterly issue. Well, a small <laughs> filling usually becomes a bigger yes. filling and a bigger filling and then a crown. Yes, so yes. that's the natural progression. Now, you do something kind of special for something that I've been through, and that's the sleep apnea. And I took the sleep test a couple years ago and went through that process. Mm -hmm. And talk to me about that. Well, about three years ago, I... I've always been fascinated by sleep. I'm a, I'm a sleeper. I really enjoy my sleep. Not on and, the job, I hope. No. Okay. I'm always rested. <laughs> I, I am a true morning person. But I um, found it's interesting how, you know, a lot of my friends and, and parents' friends, how they function with not getting good rest. Yes. And so I started looking into it a little bit more and uh, went to a course and my dad who's a dentist actually went with me nice. and we learned all about how dentists can help patients yes. with sleep apnea okay. not only do we screen for it for people who because it's very underdiagnosed. How do you it's, screen for it? well when a patient comes in to me for their normal exam we do ask about snoring now Okay. And in addition, we have a whole list of their medical history. Okay. We can see if they've had past heart attacks or if they're on high blood pressure medication, diabetes medication. And then I can see some, you know, in the mouth, there's actually some red flags, uh, really? such as acid reflux destruction, okay. yes. grinding of the teeth. Uh, I look at their airway, their tongue size, and there's so many clues in the mouth. And it's a Good way to start a conversation and sure. plant a seed that maybe there's more going on. So you notice something that the red flags go mm -hmm. up and you you think, at least based on experience, that this is a sleep apnea issue. Right. Do you, do you send them then 
to have the well, sleep test? Well, it depends or how on, you, yeah, um, there's several avenues. Okay. Some people come to me based on knowing that I do this and right. they have tried CPAP and can't yes. tolerate it. Or they come to me um, because their doctor referred them. Okay. Or they come to me because they snore and they want me to help them. And, and, their, and the spouse has sent them, right? Exactly. Yeah. And okay. then, of I course, can relate. Yeah, then I have my, my patients. And what's funny is I say, you know, do you snore? Oh, yeah, my wife says I do. Yeah. Well, you know, have you ever heard of sleep apnea? I don't have that. I sleep right. just fine. They, they sleep all through the night, they say. Right. But what they don't know what's going on as they're sleeping. They're not getting the restful sleep. So it's finally when usually the, the fatigue catches up with them yes. or their spouse makes them pursue it. Right. And right. then I help coordinate that. So what is sleep apnea? Um, there's several kinds of sleep disorders. Uh, the obstructive sleep apnea is what I treat. Okay. And that is where there is a narrowing or a complete blockage of the airway during sleep. Okay. And so your body, of course, the number one thing it needs is oxygen. Right. And so you're sleeping, you know, supposed, supposed to be going through your sleep cycles. Right. But your body is constantly waking yourself up. It's called an arousal. Okay. And interrupting that sleep cycle. Because you're not breathing. Because you're not breathing. Right. And they say, you know, you don't completely wake up. Right. But your body is waking itself up. Wow. Okay. So you've diagnosed and the person agrees. What happens next? Well, once they get a diagnosis and we can see how severe their sleep apnea is, right. then we can see if they're a candidate for, for a CPAP or oral appliance. Okay. And, um, you know, CPAP really is the gold standard yes. of treatment, especially in severe cases. But the American Academy of Sleep Medicine has actually approved an oral appliance uh, for mild to moderate sleep apnea. Wow. And in severe cases, when the person will not use the CPAP at all. Yes, I can relate because I've been on it. Mm -hmm. And it's very intrusive and everything else. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even breaks down or stops working and you have to take it in. Let's examine this a little bit. <laughs> How do you get to, from the diagnosis to this device? Well, after, you know, we do a consult and okay. once you get that diagnosis, we um, go through a, just a further exam. I, I look at everything in the mouth and okay. we do some questionnaires. But it's mostly so that I can uh, talk to your doctor. I send letters to okay. your, all the physicians involved in your care. Okay. And we take impressions, uh, upper and lower impression, and we measure uh, how far you can move your jaw forward, because okay. that is our goal. The goal is to move the lower jaw forward enough to keep your airway open all through the night. Keep okay. your tongue and, I mean, all the muscles of your tongue and throat attach right here. So by pulling that forward and pulling those muscles tight, you open up the airway. You open up the airway. Wow. And more often than not, stop the snoring that goes along with it. Okay. I hope my wife is watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's her biggest complaint. She talks about my snoring and talking. Yes. And of course, I have no idea I'm doing that, but... Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What what you've talked about the process. What kind of costs are we looking at? And is it is it approved for Medicare it and is, for insurance yes. these days? Um, it is the, the Somna Somna Dent appliance is you know there's a hundred different appliances okay. out there, and some people go to the internet and they would say oh that oral appliance doesn't work for me because I've tried it. Well, the one on the internet is not made for sleep. People apnea. can order it themselves. Yes, it's okay. boil and bite. It's flimsy. Oh. Um, it's very arbitrary where your jaw's positioned. Um, and so we're, we're a little bit more technical than that. And so Medicare has actually approved it, and I'm a Medicare provider okay. for it. And most medical insurances, just a couple years ago, only about half medical insurances right, covered right. it, and now it's almost 100%. Wow. Yeah. So once they cover it, you know, you pay up to 80%. It's not through dental insurance. Okay. It's all medical because this is a medical condition. Right, it's, right. A dental solution to a medical problem. Wow. And, and I think when I look at this, the smallness of it mm -hmm. compared to the CPAP, which is a machine and a tube and a face mask and all of that. And I've got several of my uh, contemporaries who are doing that. Yeah. Gonna, well, you can imagine I'm going to let them know to watch this program because... <laughs> you can imagine going through TSA with this yes. versus the big backpack. E yes, yes. Yeah, this doesn't look like a bomb at all. Excellent. Thank you. I've, I've learned a lot, and I think our viewers have learned a I lot as so. well. And, and uh, as we have an aging baby boomer market, this kind of comes into play a mm -hmm. lot more than 
uh, at a younger age, right? Yeah, yes, we uh, definitely make jokes about snoring and and it's not really a laughing matter because there may no. be something more going on. But as we get older, that does um, catch up to us. Thank you. You're Aaron welcome. Elliott, your office is in Post Falls. Mm -hmm. People can find you there yep. as well as on the Internet. Learned a lot, and I think our audience did it as well. Thank, Thank you, you for coming today. Thanks for having me.